David the Bowie, I'm a sword man myself. Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm very excited to show you another fan-requested build, my Khajiit Combat Archer. Let's get started. We're going to need some serious septums early on. So enter the keep with Rayloff for access to the more expensive Imperial armor. Demonstrate your mastery of the claw dances to the Imperial. Maybe one of the superiors had the key. Until you can grab a bow. Aside from the Imperial light armor, you'll also want to grab the garlic and the mage key. Once outside, start collecting snowberries to make enchanting potions later on. Grab the Thief Stone on your way to Riverwood, and pick 5 more Tapanella. Take anything valuable from Gerda, help Fendal woo Camilla, you can tell Sven that he already has a mother. I appreciate your help. Please, take this. You can get a better bow and a potion of True Shot from Fendal's house. Then steal the garlic from the houses around town. Cut down the bandits at the Illinolta bandit camp and take their treasure map. Collect the two enchanted items from the dead Thalma. Dive for Nordic Barnacles at the wreck of the Silver Moon. Then for more at the Sunken Barrow. Pick up the Flawless Emerald near Anissa's cabin. Cast flames at the Jumping Salmon nearby, then dive in to collect the salmon. Catch any blue butterflies to make enchanting potions later on. Find the treasure in the felled tree as you pass through the wood again. Take the mead from the barrels outside Hunting Brew Meadery. Catch some more salmon at the doors to the east until you have at least a bit. Ride over to Riften and loot the three chests in the guard tower. Lure the monster out of the shrine of Xenathar. Then watch the other cats play with it. Nobody here. Takes care of that. Take the blessing and the amulet of Xenathar. Then harvest three scaly foliota from the trees along the road. In Riften, give gold to a beggar. Divines bless your kind heart. Then sell any superfluous supplies to Grelka. Now you can buy archery training from Fendal. Then take the gold back from his inventory. You should have enough gold to reach Fendal's training cap of 50 archery. At which point, you can send him home to Camilla. Double back to Whiterun and give gold to another beggar. Then, ruin the romantic life of another bard so Carlotta will let you take the garlic from her market stall and kitchen. I actually advise the Yarl on political matters. You can also steal a bunch more from House Greyman. And if you report to the Yarl, he will also let you take the garlic from his kitchen. By candlelight, and turn lesser undead from Farangar. 
And don't forget the Nordic Barnacles out in the moat. Wagon your way to Windhelm and pick some more snowberry. Follow the road south and harvest three creep clusters. Then, return to the city and harvest a couple more Nordic Barnacles from the river before boating over the salt. We'll cast off immediately. Follow the road south to Old Atias Farm and loot the elven bow from the dead veteran guard. Then, employ a bodyguard and hike to White Ridge Barrow. Let Teldrin take the heat while you strike from afar. And be sure to grab the frost damage weapon. Read the black book in the final chamber. What in the... Then cast candlelight and go for a midnight so... stroll. When you reach the end, activate the Seeker of Shadows. Cross the island to tell Mithrin and bother Nell off him. I am like great Then steal his three enchanting potions. Head back outside and annihilate the Ash Guardian. Having helped Talvis, you will now be allowed to take the Glimmer Medal inside the tower. Return to Windhelm and visit Red and Sadie. Offer to help him. Then return Viola's ring to access him as a speech drum. Buy some training. Then brew potions from Garlic, Nordic Barnacle and Salmon Row to level up. Sell Revan the potions for your money back. Then keep buying speech training and making and selling potions until you reach 50 speech and can access the merchant. Make your way to Morphle and speak to the innkeeper about the burned down house. Yeah, that was a shame. Become the Jarl's Inquisitor. Then interrogate Helgi's ghost. After dark, climb the hill behind the house. Then make Layla go away. Give Thony at the bad news. You think Alva is a vampire? Then carry out the Jarl's justice. Grab Alva's journal and bring it to the Jarl. Lead her conscripts to Movart's lair. Then cast healing on yourself whilst you allow a vampire to attack you until you can contract Sandinar Vampire. Report your success to the Jarl. Then talk to Asulfur and buy some land on land. Here's the title to your stay. Build a small house with a garden. Then plant three creep cluster. Five more Tapanella and three scaly foliota. Head inside and wait 24 hours for the first crop to grow. After picking, you'll then have to wait 72 hours for the crops to regrow. Drop by Marka and start buying smithing training from Gorza. Interrupt Kalselmo and insist he let you into the excavation site. Collect the Dwemer metal inside, and grab the smithing poke. You can safely snipe Mimi from the ledge while Teldrin distracts her. Then return to Kalselmo for the museum. He will allow you to take the Dwemer metal nearby. Then you can go and steal everything from the Dwemer museum. Once you kill the guard, you can also steal the Dwemer metal from Kalselmo's laboratory. Loot more Dwemer metal from Ritu and Iri. And the Dwarven storeroom outside Mazol. 
Revisit Riften and find from deepest fathoms to start the unfathomable depths quest. Pick two glowing mushrooms inside a bunch of them. Then sprint past the automaton, stopping to pick up Dwemer Metal when you can. Return the lexicon to the ancient knowledge of text. And you can always practice your archery on the Centurion. Train with Gorza to 30 smithing so you can access the Dwarven smithing pro. Then, wander up to Winterhold and join the Cobble. Well done. I think you'll be a superb addition to the Cobble. Welcome. Offer to help Drevis with any college business. Then equip the Mystic Tuning Glove and quick save in front of the nearby Focal Point. Activate the Focal Point to receive the plus 100 Fortify Magicka for 2 hours effect, reloading the quick save if you don't receive it. Have Teldrin play the waiting game, then descend into the middle. Find the Lone Drogo and cast Turn Lesser Undead to level restoration. When you level up, return to Ferolda and buy some destruction things. Then keep turning the Drogger until you have at least 70 restoration for the Necromage pro. I like to go to 75, so that I also have the option of taking the Expert Restoration perk later. Then, brew potions to level up, and trade them to Ferolda for destruction training until you reach 60 destruction and can access the Augmented perk. You can also buy some higher level healing spells from Colette while you're here. Visit Glover in Ravenrock and buy a weapon with the Chaos Enchantment, and one with the Banish Enchantment. While you're in town, you can also grab the Ancient Nordic Pickaxe from Precious in the Morning. Head home and start harvesting potion ingredients. Every 10 days, return to collect more Dwemer Metal from Tel Mithrim, Reachwind Eyrie, near Calselmo, and in the excavation site. Once you have enough, use two-thirds of your Dwemer Metal to craft Dwarven Bows. Then, use the Blacksmith Potions from Enchuenzel to upgrade them and reach 100 smithing. As you level up, you should also buy Light Armor Training from Grelka. Whilst you're in Riften, head into the Ratway and beat down Gian the Fist so you can also acquire the Gloves of the Pugil. Buy Petty, Lesser, and Common Soul Gem. Then disenchant all your enchanted items. Enchant your Dwarven Bows with Banish. Then sell them to Grelka for training to her cap of 75 Light Heart. Once you have reached Grelka's cap, speak to Brynjolf and perform his task to join the Thieves Guild. You can then start buying archery training from the master level trainer, Nuru. If you run out of Dwarven Bows, just make Iron Daggers and enchant those with Banish until you reach 100 enchantment. Enchant a set of alchemy gear, then make potions from your harvested ingredients until you reach 100 alchemy. You can then use the profits from selling these potions to reach Nirwin's training cap of 90 Archer. Enter Honor Hall Orphanage and end Grelod's Reign of Terror. Advise Aventus his wish has been granted, then join the Dark Brotherhood by executing the hostages, sparing your fellow Khajiit, of course. Head to the Sanctuary to meet Nazir and buy some more light armor. Craft yourself an ebony bow, then upgrade your gear with a leftover smithing potion. Enchant the bow with chaos and frost damage, then enchant your other gear to boost your archery, stamina, and health. 
Stop by Shimmy's cave and harvest some more glowing mushrooms. Finish off the Falma. Then grab their Falma helmets. Drop in on the Dawn Guard and kill Durak as he trains outside the fort so he can take his Dawn Guard armor. Climb up to Thorohost and execute Captain Valmir so he can take his Stormcloak Officer Helmet, Boots and Braces. If he isn't wearing the Stormcloak gear, you'll have to complete his mission and clear the ruin first. Find Kajo outside either Dawnstar or Riften and ask him about the bandits. He'll give you a quest to retrieve his moon amulets in a radiant location. So just head there, kill the bandits, and retrieve the amulet. Return to Kajo and dismiss Teldrin temporarily. Then give the amulet to Kajo, unlocking him as a follower. You can then recruit him and take the unique amulet from his inventory. Either keep him as a follower, or immediately dismiss him and chase down Teldrin. Head to the Temple of Mara and speak to Dinya Bawu for the Book of Love quest. Complete the quest for the Agent of Mara effect. And then grab the Lord Stone for additional armor and magic resistance. Retrieve the Dragonstone from Bleak Falls Barrow and return it to Farangar to spawn dragons. Shoot one down and go and get some lessons from the Greybeards. When you next enter a town, you'll be approached by two cultists and can start the Dragonborn quest. Find Freya at the Temple of Mira. I am here to either save my people or avenge them. Then meet the man himself. You are Dragonborn. I can feel it. You must go to Sarah. Speak to Storm. Learn there the word that you have long ago. Use that knowledge at the least. Then load the first word of Bend Will from Searing's Watch. Use the shout to purify the Windstone. Then return to Storm to complete the Fate of the Skull quest. Leave Solstheim, then return to the Skull Village and you should overhear Dior and Fenari discussing Baldor's disappearance. Speak to Dior, then go and kill the Thalma at the abandoned road. Free Baldor a second time. Then go and convince Antarion to leave. Very well. You will depart the island once we have made the Turn to Baldur, and he will teach you how to forge with Star Wars. Baldur also reveals the location of the Star Wars source, where you can mine more than you will need to craft the Star Wars bow. Venture over to Colbion Barrow and find Rallus' excavation. Wait at the barrow for 72 hours. Then fast travel to Raven Rock to spawn the crew. Return to the barrow and clear it of Drogar. Then grab Arzadal's boots. Repeat the process until you have the rest of Arzadal's armor. Before leaving town, pay a visit to Drayla Aelor one evening and shoot her down. Then take her Dunmer shoot. At this point, you should also be able to reach Nazir's training cap of 90 light armor. Use your alchemy gear to brew an enchanting potion from blue butterfly wings and snowberries. 
Use this and the Azadal armor to enchant a new set of alchemy gear. Continue the loop of making potions and crafting improved alchemy gear until you have one Falmer helmet remaining. Then, enchant the Dhamma shoes and a chest piece with Fortify Smithing, the Falma helmet and a circlet with Fortify Alchemy, and an amulet, ring, and gloves with both Fortify Alchemy and Fortify Smithing. Brew the rest of your ingredients into enchanting potion, then brew a smithing potion from Listerwort and Glowing Mushroom. Use your gear and the smithing potion to upgrade your bow and armor. Then enchant the bow with Chaos Damage and Frost Damage, and your gear according to the video description or your own preference. Add a main hall, cellar, and greenhouse to your steading. Then add all of the planters to the greenhouse. Uproot the plants outside, then plant 7 Nightshade, which can be found in any graveyard. And 4 Glowing Mushrooms. Inside, plant 9 Canis Fruit, all of which can be found in Telmithrium. And 9 Juniper Berries, which can be found throughout the region. Then just wait in your cellar for the plants to grow. You can combine the Canis Root and Juniper Berries for Fortify Marksman Potions, which also boost the damage of your unarmed strikes. And you can combine the Glowing Mushrooms and Nightshade for Fortify Destruction Potions. By combining these potions, you will be an unstoppable archer. Now, you can put the cat amongst the pigeons. Add a fish hatchery to your house so you can spawn some tasty salmon. Delicious. Procure some moon sugar and prepare some Khajiit cuisine. Visit the Stumbling Saber Cat at Port Dunstad and enjoy a drink with Kaja. Help Jizaga become a master of magic. He's also the only other Khajiit follower, although neither he or Kajo can become your steward or spouse. Head to Anji's camp and learn about composure, speed, and precision. Completing her challenges will grant up to six levels in archery if you haven't already reached one hundred. It is also a good idea to use the hunting bow since that has a faster draw time. Hunt down the dogs of Skyrim. Teach Teldrin his words have consequences. Cure Jadar's Skuma Addiction. Claw out some eyes. One shot dragons. A 
and at the end of your path, reunite with Azura, mother to all Khajiit. Speak to her disciple. Retrieve her corrupted star. Then purge Malin from the relic. Receive Azura's blessing and pass to the Twilight Beam. Well that's it for this build. Thanks for watching, and a special thank you to everyone who subscribes to my channel, leaves a comment, or likes the videos. If you have any comments or suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Thanks again, and see you next time.